So basically I would love for you to explain two things to me. And the first is just to walk me through what makes you such an effective driver. For me, I have a very, they call it a low rate of closure. So my face does not go super open uh -huh. to super close very quick. It kind of stays square throughout the golf swing. And uh, that's, you know, because of my bowed left wrist and I have a very shut club face. Yeah, so go to the top of your swing. What does that look like? Yeah, so top of my swing, you know, obviously it's gonna look a little different compared to- Yeah, when you're doing it in real time. Moment. Yeah, but so my left wrist will be a little flexed like right this, like yep. here. Club face is pointing kind of straight up in the air. Right. And another thing is my arms aren't very deep. Mm. I kind of have a very high, I have high arms in the backswing. Right. Before in college, it was even higher. And then the first move would be out. So I, I would have zero depth. And I obviously it's gonna go left and I would cut it. Got it. And then you lose distance and control or? Uh, yeah, yeah, I would say so. It's not yeah. optimal, but at least I got to work with one ball flight. So I kind of knew that, okay, on some holes, I'm just gonna aim it in the left trees because if I just hit my normal shot, that's gonna that's gonna be in the fairway. Yeah. So I think playing like that, it kind of makes it a little bit easier for you, but it was a little too much. Yeah. All um, right, so you have a low rate of closure though, so that's helping your face kind of stay yeah. stable. Yeah. All right, what else makes you so good? Uh, I would say, you know, I with a driver, I don't have a lot of lateral movement either. Mm. Uh, which, you know, a lot a lot of the great players have lateral movement, which it's not necessarily a bad thing, but too much, and if you don't get the proper tilts, you're gonna hit down on the ball. So the best players like Greg Norman, Jack Nicholas, you know, Tiger, they had a lot of lateral movement, but they also pulled up really hard. And I have a lot of that as well, where, you know, if you watch my left arm and my left shoulder, it will pull up. And that's how you get kind of the club up out of the ground and you hit up on the ball. So what's the alternative for you of lateral movement? Well, it's, you know, I'm still moving forward, mm -hmm. but I can't move too far, too far forward because my arms, as I said, I don't have a lot of depth. Yep. So I kind of pivot more around my right foot. Okay. Which is still fine because I get a lot of side bend. You see my left shoulder kind of going really up in the air and that's that's kind of how i make it work and i keep the face very square got it and when you hit up on the ball that's going to move the path a little bit more left so that's why you know i hit hit that nice little cut and for me it's one dimensional but i know where the, where the ball is going to go what is your swing thought right now on driver like some of this is obviously happening naturally now yeah. and it's just muscle memory what are you thinking about right now yeah so speaking up of that you know pulling up part that is kind of something that i i need to work on a little bit right now because i've been um in the short game been focusing a lot on moving forward and and the wedges get that angle of attack down whereas with the driver i want to kind of stay back a little bit and still get my body forward but kind of you know pivot a little bit more on the on the right foot and kind of get get that left shoulder up in the air so that's kind of all that i'm trying to think of right now feel like I'm not getting too far forward in transition kind of staying back and letting the, the hips extend that was money that's the one right there yeah how far is that gonna fly uh ignoring I mean, the fact that we're into the wind yeah normally that's gonna fly about 300 I would okay. say yeah and it's got some chase to it too yeah that one's pretty optimal as well um so yeah, if I wanted to hit a little higher, higher, it would probably give me another five yards. That little lower probably loses 15 yards, but just all depends on what hole. Uh, Will you mess with your driver settings based on the venue or say, you know, when we're going to the open or anything like that? No, no. not really. Um, I think that for the most part just gives you more problems. Going back to the discussion there, it's like, you could potentially make the driver more optimal for that week. But if the ball is doing some weird stuff, one out of 10 balls, that can give you some scar tissue as well. So it's like, yes, this driver might not be optimal if it's super wet and rainy out there, but at least I know kind of what it's gonna do. Right. So. That makes sense. Yeah. All right, now if you're giving a lesson to the average amateur, what can they learn from your 
driver swing, from how you hit driver, is there anything that people can take away that they can try to emulate? Yeah, I mean, it's so hard uh, to give like one generic advice to a lot of people. Um, but I, I mean, the, the hardest thing for people, especially like if you just sit in front of a desk all day and, and you try to hit bombs, yep. it's, you know, cause most guys just kind of come over the top, um, it's, it, it, I, I would probably encourage, like if you struggle with a slice, you know, a good feeling for most people mm -hmm. is actually, you know, to kind of move forward with a pelvis so they can kind of allow some side bend in there. All right, this is good. So yeah. uh, you're fixing the slice right now. Yeah. This is probably what you see most of your amateur partners are hitting a slice, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, so walk me through that. Your, your pelvis is... Yeah, if, you, if your pelvis is moving, you know, and there's a lot of people that like to, or they see a lot of pros do it, um, but they only do one part of it and they, they can't do the rest. Mm -hmm. But, you know, they, they exaggerate this pelvis movement, kind of getting it away from the body. Yep. Because now you rotated, but if you don't have any side bend in there. Okay. You, you're, you're just, your path is just gonna go straight to the left. So what getting the so pelvis- So the side bend helps you hit it to the right? Yes. So if I were to stand here, it helps just, you start it to the right, I should say. Well, instead it gets of it even. It. Yeah, it yeah. evens out the path a little bit. If I just sit here and I do this, you know, this this is going to come from the inside and, and kind of out to the right. But if the pelvis is moving this way, you know, it's it's kind of hard to side bend enough, and that's why most people can't can't really hit draws. Interesting. Um, yeah. You know, you got to be somewhat flexible to, to twist and, and turn like, you know, someone like Joaquin Neiman, for example. And I have a lot of side bend like that. I think Sam Bennett was another guy. I sure, looked, yeah. Looked at his impact. You know, he's he's very much like that. And it's just it's just hard to, hard for most people to make that work. Do you study a lot of other players' swings and are there guys that you kind of borrow from or you're curious about how it works the way they do it? Uh, not intentionally, but if it pops up, I'll like, oh, that's cool. That's, you know, I wonder why he does that. Yeah. And then try to figure it out. But it's not some like, okay, now we're going to go down the list of people and try to understand it because it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't pertain to me that much. Right. It's just kind of interesting to, to, to see. What was your swing originally modeled after? Do you know, just watching guys around you or, or watching guys on TV or it, it not, just kind of happened? Yeah. I mean, I guess like I've always been a fan of DJ swing. So I have a lot of similar things to Yeah, to both DJ. left wrists and then, yeah. yeah. A lot of, you know, he hits cuts, gets a lot of pull up, yeah. uh, very rotary. Um, but it, it's it's one of those, like, you try to model yourself to different people and you don't understand fully what they're doing. And maybe you can't do the same things as, as he does. You know, it's kind of just a pointless, um, pointless journey to embark on. Uh, I think you just gotta understand what you have and try to fix the things that you can fix to make you better. And I, I think especially being indoors hitting balls all day, you can definitely go down the rabbit holes of trying to fix everything. But at the end of the day, you gotta have something that you can predict day in, day out. All right, well, let's talk of slices. I feel like we better have you just rip one and, and uh, get some positive thoughts instead yeah. of some mistake talk. Yeah. See if we can replicate that last shot. Mm -hmm. That's pretty nice. Yeah, that's that little lower one, but that's awesome. <laughs> 